call to order the Grant County Board of Commissioners regular meeting for September 15th, 2016. Please join us for the, the, the Pledge of Allegiance and the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I salute the flag of the state of New Mexico and see a symbol of perfect friendship among the United Cultures. So, Commissioner, I understand there might be a change on the agenda? Yes. Um, Mr. Royer, in reference to the proclamation uh, for the county fair, wish to be moved up because he has a conflict on another meeting. And that is item. Um, that would be D. So can we move item D to prior to public hearing? So moved. Second. All those favors, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Can I get a motion to approve, approve the agenda as amended? Approved. Um, a motion to approve second. as amended. Uh, there's a motion and a proper second to amend the agenda to move item D to directly in front of the public hearing number one. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is public input. During, the portion of the, during this portion of our meeting, we welcome your suggestions and want to hear your concerns. This is not a question and answer period. Speakers will be limited to five minutes. Any individual who would like to discuss an item in more depth may request to be placed on a future agenda. You will be able to get agenda uh, request forms in the county manager's office. So at this time, the commission will stand for public input. Just raise your hand and I'll call on you one at a time. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. My name is Ben Rass. Sure. Is that better? Great, thank you. My name is Ben Rasmussen. I'm here on behalf of the two local food policy councils, the Grant County Food Policy Council and the Southwest New Mexico Regional Food Policy Council. Um, we're a very active coalition working to develop better policies surrounding food to improve Grant County economic potential, job potential, food access, and other issues surrounding food. Um, professionally, I work for the Southwest Center for Health Innovation and the National Center for Frontier Communities, and I focus largely on food-related issues. Um, I'm going to start coming to these meetings regularly just to keep you guys up to date on some of our efforts. Um, in the near future, we're going to have some policy drafts and recommendations that we're going to present to you guys on the agenda. Um, we have two major um, focus areas currently that I just wanted to brief you guys about. Um, one is local food promotion. Uh, this past year, uh, we completed a large study in the region um, looking at kind of the in-depth um, state of food, local food production, purchasing, and things of that nature. Um, we work, the Regional Food Policy Council is Katrin Grant, Hidalgo and Luna County. The food production is incredibly important. It's a primary industry. Um, farming, ranching, um, and purchasing local food. And we're currently uh, awaiting word to see if we receive funding for a follow-up program to implement those findings, which would be a three-year, $321,000 program that would see us working with local farmers, local food buyers, um, and the likes. Um, why is it important? Well, for every dollar spent on local food, it recirculates in the local economy up to two and a half times. So for every dollar spent on a farmer's market or that a school buys from a local farmer, that money gets recirculated and further generates profits um, for the community. Um, I estimated that there's about a $3 million market in Grant County every year for fresh fruits and vegetables, and it'd be much more if restaurants and institutions um, were included. And if up to 15% of this can be captured by local food sales, we could have a nearly $1.3 million impact um, annually um, for the local economy. Moreover, nutrition and safety, local foods are often um, more nutritious, safer to eat. 
So what we'll be asking the county commission to do is, uh, like I said, over the next few months, we'll be bringing draft policies that would help, um, you know, that would see the county supporting local food efforts. Um, probably the first of these is going to be a procurement preference. Um, they're done in many ways throughout the country, counties and states. And um, one way they might look is that we'd say for every dollar or for all the money that the county spends through its institutions on food, we'd say if up to 10% of that could be targeted towards local foods, um, that would open up new markets for local farmers, um, producers, ranchers, and things of that sort, um, and would be a way for the county to sort of stimulate the economy using money that it's already spending. Um, Another one that maybe, you know, would be good to have the county support on, but would maybe be more of a city issue is zoning and utility preferences for local growers. We have a lot of growers that use city water um, to grow their crops, and currently it's kind of burdensome because the rates are very high if you're using that money to grow crops. Um, another one I think you all may have heard of is composting waste. Um, over 98% of all food that's consumed in this county comes from outside and nearly 40% of that is thrown away. Um, our soils here are generally fairly poor, and if we could um, capture some of those nutrients and build the soil, it'd be a real um, advantage to farmers. Um, I'll also be sending out an email to invite you to attend a food policy meeting to meet some of these people that are working on these issues and to learn a little bit more in depth of how we're going about it. Um, and we're also going to be drafting um, a county food charter that we'd love to have your support on that would outline maybe a 10 to 20 year plan as to how we could increase local food production and support our local producers. Um, the other issue that we're working greatly on is hunger. Um, last year we comp completed a health impact assessment study looking really in depth at um, the food pantry and emergency food assistance program in the region. Um, as a direct result of that study and our recommendations, we have um, the Food Bank Assistant Act being supported by Michelle Lucan Grisham and is currently seeking a Republican co-sponsor um, in the House of Representatives. Um, and this national bill would increase um, emergency food spending from $50 million to $100 million a year across the nation. Um, what we did find is that 77% of Grant County food pantry recipients um, rely on the food every month. It's no longer an emergency or supplemental program. It's something that many families um, are relying on from a month-to-month -month basis. Nearly half of these families skip bills on a monthly basis in order to purchase enough food. And over half of these families um, eat less than they should in order to make the food last. Um, we have another grant out um, with a private foundation that would help us implement these findings into a food, pa food pantry capacity building program um, to help uh, the local coordinators um, learn how to better raise funds and, and order food to serve their clients better. Um, in the future, we'll brief you on, on specific efforts and ask for your support in, in relieving hunger in the region and to secure funding to build necessary infrastructure to improve these issues. That's it. Just so you know, in the future, you're always welcome to attend the work sessions and give your report as a county, um, uh, you're part of the county, we point you. So we actually have a, um, a whole item in the agenda where you can spend a little more time and really uh, you'll get, you won't only have the electeds, but you'll have all the management here too. And it, it, it takes everybody to make this kind of stuff work. So, um, you're welcome to also come and do it in public input if that's what you choose. Okay. I appreciate your input and valuable information for the community. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, further public input. Do you think I was looking over the top of you? <laughs> I'm going to make sure it was me. <laughs> Good morning, Commissioners. Um, my name is Manuel Maldonado. I'm with the Grant County Sheriff's Office. Can you hear me now? Okay. My name is Manuel Maldonado. I'm a corporal with the Grant County Sheriff's Office. Um, since the last commission meeting, we have had another tragic death or loss of an officer in New Mexico. 
at this time, I would like to have a moment of silence for Officer Clint Corvinas of the Alamogordo um, Police Department and all other officers that have been killed recently. Thank you. In my tenure at the Sheriff's Office, I have seen the best in people and the worst. I speak for all my brothers and sisters when I say we have seen many things in our careers. For example, accidents, some with injuries, and even death. We have seen many homicides and even more suicides. We have been to many domestics, verbal and physical. <clears throat> Most adults and some children. We can recall all these events and describe to you every scene we have been to. In New Mexico alone, we have had a total of 153 line of duty deaths. Once again, we are asking for the commission to support the Sheriff's Office on getting more money so that our pay is parity to the Silver City Police Department. We are not asking for millions of dollars. As you all know, no life is worth all the money in the world. We as officers took an oath to protect and serve our communities, and that we do to the best of our ability. There are very few people in the world that could do the law enforcement profession. It is mind-boggling that our county can pay an administrative assistant or administrative employee who has no risk but to get a paper cut more money than an officer who puts his life on the line every day. We have to miss out on school activities, summer activities, and even holidays with our families. <clears throat> I've been told that some of our management feels we have too many officers. We should ask the people of Grant County if they feel that way. Because at the Sheriff's Department, we are the number one law enforcement agency in the county. We have covered Hurley and Santa Clara due to them not having coverage. We answer the call and we take the report. When they do have coverage and a major incident occurs, we take over the scenes. We utilize our investigators over time and that comes out of the sheriff's budget. We have had several calls where people in Santa Clara and Hurley have requested a deputy over the police department. About two weeks ago, an incident occurred out in Pino Altos. And during this incident, uh, the, super advised, the supervisor advised, um, it was advised there wasn't any coverage in Santa Clara and Hurley. The supervisor asked what time these officers had left. One was an hour uh, earlier, and the second officer had just went off duty just a few minutes. The supervisor asked uh, for our dispatch to have Santa Clara stay out a little bit longer. That officer denied to stay out. This incident was a standoff and uh, the officers uh, uh, in the end uh, Everybody was okay. Uh, nobody got shot, injured, hurt, or anything like that. If Santa Clara and Hurley do not have the officers to cover 24 hours, then the Grand County Sheriff's Office should take over all law enforcement duties and receive all their funding. I myself have looked at, looked at the uh, New Mexico County classifications, and I know Grant County is a being over. And I've compared our county to other counties. For example, Lincoln County. They're a bigger county as far as square miles. Population-wise, they have 10,000 people less than us. The starting pay for a deputy is 20.45 an hour. We're at 17.23.
Recently, the Silver City Police Department had 21 applicants uh, for the position of police officer. We've only had two. We used to be the number one department. Everybody wanted to work for us. All we're asking for is parity to the town of Silver City. Thank you. Further public input. I'm just going with who I see first, so. Commissioners, my name is uh, Jake Viegas. I'm a deputy with Gary County Sheriff's Department. I am actually here in reference to the pay as well. I'm going to read you an article that I got from ABC News on July 10th of this year. Okay. With the number of applicant, applicants down more than 90% in some cities, police departments may soon be posting more signs that say help wanted instead of most wanted. From the nation's largest police force in New York to tiny departments with only five officers, far fewer people are looking to join the force than in years past. And departments of all sizes are being forced to rethink how to fill their ranks. With public safety departments facing some of the same problems with problems other employees do with U.S. unemployment at a 30-year low, police recruiters are additionally steamed by the job's low pay, tarnished image, increasingly tougher standards for new recruits, and limited job flexibility. You don't move up in a police department the way you would in a dot-com, admits Chicago Police Department recruiter Patrick Camden. And most importantly, few jobs are more dangerous. You can get, you can get shot uh, for 40000 or be home with your family for 60000 says Seattle, Seattle Police Recruiter Jim Ritter. In addition to officer patrol work, there may be community policing details, bike officers, school officers, and other specialty positions. A small force typically has less disperse, diversification and less opportunity for advancement. The Officers equate pay with respect, says Gilbert Gallegos, presidential of the Fraternal Order of Police, a national association of rank and file, and file officers, may be reluctant to accept a lower salary they feel is less prestigious. According to that article, it is less appealing for somebody to jeopardize their life when they could actually do less work and make more money. Law enforcement is definitely a calling. And the Sheriff's Department is the heart and soul of law enforcement in the county. Our mission statement for the county is, it is the mission of Grand County Sheriff's Department to provide effective and efficient law enforcement service in protecting the life, property, and constitutional rights of all citizens of Grant County. The mission is accomplished in a manner which exhibits a high degree of personal and professional integrity. The members of Grant County Sheriff's Department is diligently will diligently strive to earn the public's trust and confidence in law enforcement of a daily basis. As a deputy, I could speak for myself and some of the other deputies um, that we do strive to to conduct our manner in a professional uh, manner. We are not a municipality. I've been told that uh, we don't do the same thing in Silver City, you know, so we're not going to, we can't answer for Silver City. Municipalities run off of revenue. They get money from their citations. We, as a county, have to provide a different type of service to the public. We conduct civil standbys. We um, do conduct traffic stops, but Considering that we may get called from Cliff and yes, we might get called from Cliff and have a call in Hurley. You know, we have we could have up to 40 minutes to respond to a, a call, and that actually takes away from from some of the aspects of conducting traffic control. And if that's what the 
if that's what we are being compared to, you know, then maybe we need to rethink what our mission is. Thank you. Further public input? Go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for having us today. My name is Regan Aguirre Jr. and I've been a deputy with Grant County Sheriff's Department for three years. I have worked with the county for a total of eight years and have started my 10th year in law enforcement. Please know that this speech is humbly submitted before you and that your positions are truly respected by my fellow officers and myself. So thank you for what you do as well. I truly ask that what was said today by my fellow officers and myself be taken into consideration and not fall upon deaf ears. And Romans 13 one says that every person be subject to governing authorities for there is no authority except from God and those that exist have been instituted by God. Our colleagues across America, our brothers and sisters in blue are doing the hardest job in the world and it just keeps getting tougher. At the start of every shift, we go out without knowing the dangers of what awaits us. We knew what we were getting into when we signed up for this job, as well as our wives and families. It was a decision that we all knew would require lots of sacrifice and repercussions in this line of work. Long, sh long shifts, stress, being cussed at, spat on, called every name in the book, intimidation made to ourselves, our wives, our families by local known criminals and every time we do our job to the best to our ability we're almost never thanked by those that needed us the most and instead are criticized and mocked. We knew we would have to deal with the time lost away from our families because we vowed to protect this community which also includes protecting you all and all those in this room. As the Grand County Sheriff's Administration is sitting comfortably in their offices and the secretaries that are paid more an hour than my fellow officers and I. We are missing our children's extracurricular acti activities, school field trips, graduations, holidays, church functions, and so, so much more because they expected shift work while dealing with the deceased bodies, murders, crashes, children who are raped or beaten. There's just too much to list. As police officers, our bodies feel the effects at young ages due to the extra added stress that comes naturally with the job. The foot pursuits, the fights, the extreme temperatures that we're subject, subjected to work in. But we continue to do our job because we wear this badge with pride and honor and take it very seriously. Every time my brother falls, well, which recently has hit close to home, we feel the effects. We grieve, we get angry, we stress. Why? Because they died doing a job that me and my fellow comrades are doing an unglorified job that many people don't want to do anymore. A career by which now society deems as irrelevant and where officers are disrespected and taken advantage of. Not only taken advantage of by criminals, but by those that we expect to have our backs like our county, most of our community, and the judicial system, and even some of our public officials. Instead, we are put as low priority every time our agency or officers request something that is needed. Who wants to put their life on the line daily, deal with all we deal with, and the time away from our families for so little pay? The Grand County Sheriff's Office was once the place to work for all police officers that wanted to be employed. But well, according to the number of candidates that were compared to from the surrounding agencies, I assure you that that is not the case anymore. We need to attract new and worthy candidates for this job and create an agency where they will still will stay employed and gain experience needed to pursue a career. We know that it is possible for you to grant us a raise worthy of our careers and to give us the equipment and training we need to do our job safely. Please help boost morale in this department. Help make this department worth the sacrifices we make every day on, the, on and off duty. Help make this department and county the place we all want to work for and be proud to work for. We, the officers of Grand County Sheriff's Department, ask you to make the right decision. Several officers are looking to leave this agency as I stand before you right now. So I ask you this, what are you going to do without us? I respectfully leave you with this scripture. 
John 15, 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay his life down for his friends. So I thank you, my friends, and I God bless you all. Further public game pit? Okay. You? Yep. Good morning, Commissioner Star Model 6. You might want to Clorox this when you're done. Um, my name is Bianca Badi. I'm the program coordinator of the Juvenile Probation Office. In your packets, there's a survey on community youth needs. So I'm preparing to write a new grant to the Juvenile Justice Advisory Committee for continued funding. And part of it is I have to do an updated community needs assessment. And we haven't had one done since 2012. So I'm kind of doing this survey as my own update. And I'll be at the uh, Red Hot Children's Fiesta doing the surveys as well this weekend. So if you have time, if you'd please fill it out and give it to Randy or Jacob or anybody. And they'll get it over to me. And that's all. And the Sheriff's Department, thank you for your work. I work at the Probation Office. Job security is appreciated. Because I don't want to be furloughed. So thank you. Have a good morning. Thank you. Oh, good. Turned in. Further public input? I know you've had, I'm sorry, he's had his hand up every time. So go ahead. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. And uh, my name is Richard Minus. Uh, this is the second time I come over to address for that uh, ordinance for off-road and ATVs <laughs> and for the adoption of that ordinance. Mr. Morris, do you want to do it now? Uh, is that you, re okay? you requested to be on the agenda. You can do it now if you'd like to. Do you Oh. oh, okay. I'm sorry. Thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, I'll wait. You'll wait? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank All right. You. Then you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Jason Jordan. I'm a deputy with the Grand County Sheriff's Department. I've been with the department five years now. I just got a couple of things to say. Um, we can go over statistics all morning, all day. Bottom line is we're just asking for a little bit of help. Um, main thing for me is the radios. You know, you're out there by yourself. You can't. You don't have any backup for like 20 minutes. Nobody can even hear that you need backup. Um, our equipment, some of the units, they so have a lot of miles on them. I'm fortunate to have one of the new ones. Um, but some of the guys, you know, they're breaking down on the way to calls, on the way to domestics. Um, so I'd, I'd appreciate you guys taking that into consideration. Like Corporal said, we're not asking to be rich. We're not asking to be millionaires. We're not, we know we're not going to. We joined this job because I did anyway to help the community. I grew up here most of my life. Um, kids are important to me. I have kids in this community. Um, but I just want to read a, a little uh, poem to you guys. It's uh, Tears of a Cop Under Pressure. I have been where you fear to go. I have seen what you fear to see. I have done what you fear to do. All these things I've done for you. I'm the one you lean upon. I'm the one you cast your scorn upon. The one you bring your troubles to. All these people I've been for you. The one you ask to stand apart. The one you feel should have no heart. The one you call the man in blue. But I am human, just like you. And through the years I've come to see that I'm not what you ask of me. So take this badge, take this gun. Will you take it? Will anyone? And when you watch a person die and hear a battered baby cry, then so you think that you can be all those things you ask of me. So thank you for your time. Further public input. And whichever one. Just don't wrestle for it. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Mike Burns. I work with the Grant County Sheriff's Department. I've been with the agency since 2005. This is my 21st year in criminal justice. And I think that my coworkers have covered the majority of points. What I'd like to do is challenge all of you to exercise a little bit of risk and leadership. We do it every day. Law enforcement for me was a calling. And I have no complaints. Uh, the day I began this line of work, uh, 
to this very moment. I go out, I do what I do willingly, and I do it for a reason. Uh, I feel that every day, one way or another, I am working to improve the quality of life in our communities and to keep our citizens and our communities safe. Very simple. However, the mood in the country currently, as already stated, has turned very ugly. I personally have not felt this unsafe both as a citizen and as a peacekeeper since the late 1960s and early 1970s when officers were being ambushed and killed wholesale across the country. The end of the Vietnam War, the end of the 60s, many of you remember that. It was a very uncomfortable time to be alive. Riots, death, destruction. Um, but at this point, I would like to challenge each and every one of you to take a fraction of the risk that we take every day. Be innovative. Take that leap of faith in us, in our communities, in our children, in our institutions, at a time when everything that I've just mentioned is under attack. And in doing so, solicit the support from your constituents, the community. I work in a very large residential district I have for more than a decade. And while nominally this gentleman here is my boss, I answer directly to the people who live and work in my communities that I serve in a district that's in excess of 600 square miles, and I work in that district alone. So, yes, we have problems. We have problems with dispatch. We have problems with budgets. We have problems with recruiting, retaining, training employees. But these are problems that are not insurmountable, and with assistance from you, all of you, backed up by members of the community, and I think that they will, uh, we can address them one by one and we can effectively remedy each and every one of them. Thank you. Further public input? Okay. Good morning. My name is Rachel Sierra, and I'm the interim director at El Refugio. I didn't plan to come up here, but I didn't know this was happening today. But I am asking you also to hear and take into consideration what the Sheriff's Department is asking. As the interim director at El Refugio, I have worked closely with Mr. Burns. Um, he has called me several times um, with victims of domestic violence that he fears for their life and he has himself brought them in. I've worked with Raul Villanueva for many years, and he has responded to, our, to all of our calls. I, my grandson is going to law enforcement in Phoenix, Arizona. It is the most scariest thing to me because of everything that is going on. And we need to protect also our Grand County uh, sheriffs and law enforcement because they, there might be some that don't do the work very well, but most of the percentage of them do really well, and they do their job well, and they do go out there and they put their lives on the line. And I, as a member of this community, want to continue to feel safe and that I know that there's officers out there that are looking out for me and for my family and for other community members. Thank you for that prayer, Mr. Um, Regan. Um, that was wonderful that we continue to bring God into our workforce. Thank you very much. And again, I, I pray and I hope that you have heard what they have brought to you today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Further public input? Any further? Please state your name for the record. Uh, I'm Leon C. McKay. And... Uh, I came from Morehouse Parish, Louisiana, which was one of the toughest places in the world, and they had a sheriff named Red Hinton, and he would arrest you over the telephone. He would call you up and tell you, I have a warrant for your arrest. I'm leaving here at 4 o'clock this afternoon, and you need to be here before I have to leave, and don't make me come look for you. And these guys don't get paid half enough. That Their salary should be doubled by all rights. But anyway, that's <clears throat> not what I'm here for. <clears throat> the county has an employee who has been harassing me 
and stalking me since 2008. I have reported it to the Silver City Police over and over and over, and uh, I can't ever seem to get anything done about it. I've talked to the district attorney, and uh, the other day this thing came to a head, and uh, the employee claimed that I pointed a gun at him which is a lie, and it's in the video, and it's in the police report, the sheriff's department report. And I spent 24 hours in the Grant County Jail. I'm 70 years old. I have never been in trouble in my life. This guy weighs me 100 pounds, and he's 25 years younger than I am. And he's been trying to have an altercation for years. I have a steel plate in my neck, <coughs> and if I get hit in the face or in the head hard, it will break my neck. My brother died with the exact same thing. He got killed over here on PA Road in a car wreck that whenever he wrecked it, he was, had a seat belt on it, popped his head forward and broke his neck. Same same exact thing but I can't get anything done about this I've done everything in the world possible and uh, when John Sorry was uh, the county manager I reported this to him over and over it was reported to Abigail Robinson and uh these are police reports. Anybody that wants to look at them, there's probably 25 of them in here where I've called 911 when he was stalking and harassing and so forth. And he does it on the county's money. He does it during working hours. And he does it a lot of times in the county vehicles. And I've done everything that I know to do in what have you, and I'm not going to let him get any closer to me than I did last time when I was arrested. The next time that he gets any closer than that, I won't have to call anybody about it anymore. I carry a gun all the time, and I will use it if I am forced to. But, if Mr. Gilbert Hilton had a job at the mine or p &M or Hamilton Construction, any of these places, he wouldn't have time to be following me around stalking me during working hours. And if y'all could see any way to remedy the situation, I would really, really appreciate it. Any questions? Anybody? No, Thank sir. For Thanks for coming in. Thanks for the input. I know management has your your file. Thank you. Thank you. Further public input. Kind of a marathon today. One more time. Okay. We'll move on to item D. County of Grant proclamation. Approve or disapprove a proclamation declaring September 21st through 24th, 2016 as Grant County Fair Days. Mr. Lawyer, will you come up and tell us what's going on at the fair when it's happening? <laughs> I don't wear a hat in the house, but since it has Grant County Fair on it, I'll wear it today. I don't have a speech to make. I just want to thank you for. One up, real quick. No, I don't need to make one up. Can you just tell us when it is and what's going on and what days? It starts the 21st through the 24th. Everything's set up. We'll be out there starting Saturday, getting everything lined up. 
we'd like to see everybody come out there and visit the fair, particularly the sale. <laughs> How many tickets did you buy this year? How many did I buy? Sure. Yeah. I didn't buy any this year. No. No, but there's enough out there. There'll be plenty out there to buy. I thought you'd be a salad with you. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Entertain us. Bernadette decided that she didn't want to come up because <laughs> you said that. See? She was going to escort me up here. so that She didn't want to clean she up. She didn't want to be pictured as that. administrative decision, Bernadette. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, can I get a motion to approve the proclamation? Yes, so move uh, uh, for the proclamation's concern uh, D that we... Uh, as far as the county fair is concerned on September the 21st to the 24th, making it Grant County Fair Days. And I'll second that motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, sing five, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Do you want to take a picture with us? Oh, okay. oh no. hand here. Public hearing number one. This is a discussion regarding Ordinance 01604. This is entitled the Grant County Animal Control Ordinance. Is there anybody that would like to speak on the Grant County Animal Control Ordinance? Seeing none, we'll move into approve or disapprove Ordinance 01604. Sure. <laughs> I thought maybe it's a great privilege in doing it since we've been working on this for over a year now. Is that I would make a motion that we approve Ordinance 01604, uh, reference to the entitled 2016 Grand County Animal Control Ordinance. Anything else? Okay. Our second I'm that motion. have to get the second. Okay. Discussion. We had a group working on this, Judge Laney, Heidi August, Gilbert Hilton, G.G. Uh, Schof, uh, Buddy Howard, Marshall Moore, and myself. And I want to thank that committee. That's a lot of meetings we had to put this together. I dealt with this ordinance before as a judge, and I saw that it, it wasn't protecting the citizens. It wasn't doing the job that it ne needed. And I'd also like to thank Abby because then she had to take all of our great ideas and <laughs> suffer them around and make them uh, make sense. So uh, uh, I, I just think, it, and just from the response from the public, I think this is going to be good for all of us. Thank you. I also have something to say about this. Um, when Commissioner Hall was first elected, I actually asked you to take this on because I knew of your frustrations from your previous career as a judge dealing with the animal ordinance. Um, and I want you to know that I think you did a stellar job. I really think it's important to let the candidates in the room realize that things aren't done overnight. Oh, no. That was right at 40 months ago when we uh, asked you to take this on. Yeah. It takes a long time to do something right. Things aren't done overnight. So True. with that, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Hooray. Good job. Public hearing number two. This is a discussion regarding Ordinance 01605, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of Grant County, New Mexico State, 
of New Mexico State of New Mexico Department of Health Lease Appropriation Refunding Bonds, Fort Baird Project, Series 2016, in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $55 million for the purpose of defraying the cost of refunding and redeeming the county's outstanding state of New Mexico Department of Health Lease Appropriation Bonds, Series 2008, that finance the cost of designing, acquiring, constructing, and equipping, equipping a health care facility, the Fort Baird Hospital. So is there anybody that would like to speak on that? I know Perry's here and we've been having issues on the lease. Have they, have they come back with us on that yet, Perry? I saw the last note that you sent them, and that's as far as I've seen. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, no, we have not fully resolved the lease. Uh, I believe that we will. Um, the, the state needs to get this deal done. It will save them lots of money. Um, the county is simply an accommodation party here and has been acting in very good faith. And I, I think we'll get the job done, but it's not done yet. Okay. Do you have anything else that you want to? I would would let the commission know that uh, this ordinance approves bonds on basically the same basis as the bonds that are being refunded. They are payable only from lease revenues received from the state. Okay. So we have no other incumbency. Motion to approve ordinance zero sixteen oh five. There's a motion and a second. I'll second it to approve 01605. Any discussion? Just so the public knows what this is, uh, full disclosure, when the Fort Baird Hospital was built, the county went out for the bond issue. The bond issue is a revenue bond. It's being paid from the state's lease. The, le the state is actually trying to change the lease to where it's not as beneficial for the county if they don't, uh, like Mr. Bendikin, Bendikson said, if they don't come back around to where it, it behooves us to sign that lease with them, we will not refinance their bonds. The savings will be in the neighborhood of $12 million a year to the state. So they have a, a big stake in this situation. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor saying five, saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Minutes. Approve or disapprove August 16th work session minutes. So move. To second. Uh, there's a motion and a second to approve the August 16th work session minutes. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove August 18th, 2016 regular meeting minutes. Motion to approve August 18th, 2016 regular meeting minutes. Second. All those in favor, signify saying aye. Aye. Motion passes. Financial reports. Approve or disapprove the September 9th, 2016 expenditure report. Randy, can you go through that for us, please? Um, in effect, the impact expenditure report period ending September 9th for a total of $3,316,996.62. Of that is accounts payable portion of $2,888,341.15, and it also includes two uh, pay periods totaling $428,655.77. To highlight some of the major expenses in this reporting period, are a project payment for the Forgotten Veterans Workshop at Baton Park for $32,000, uh, July 2016 fuel charges for $23,000, uh, debt service payments uh, totaling $872,000, insurance renewals for the uh, volunteer fire departments totaling $34,000, uh, jet fuel uh, and the refueler's lease payments totaling 16000 Off-road diesel for the road department totaling 13000 A fire apparatus for the Tyrone Volunteer Fire Department totaling 396000 uh, Software renewals for the treasurer's office and the assessor's office totaling 51000 Three Dodge Caravans for the senior programs totaling 73000 and a project payment for the conference center remodel totaling 153000 uh, Also included as just normal expenses as utilities, lease payments, and insurance premiums. 
Thank you very much, Mayor. Motion to approve the September 9, 2016 expenditure report. Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. E. We'll skip D. We've already done it, so we'll move to E. Approve or disapprove proclamation declaring October 2016 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Bring that. Proclamation. Whereas domestic violence is a serious crime that affects people of all races, ages, gender, and income levels. And whereas domestic violence is widespread and affects over 4 million Americans each year. And whereas one in three Americans have witnessed an incident of domestic violence. And whereas children that grow up in violent homes are believed to be abused and neglected at a rate higher than the national average. And whereas domestic violence costs the nation billions of dollars annually in medical expenses, police and court costs, shelters, foster care, sick leave, absenteeism, and non-productivity, and whereas only a coordinated community response effort will help put a stop to this heinous crime. And whereas Domestic Violence Awareness Month provides an opportunity for citizens to learn more about preventing domestic violence and to show support for the numerous organizations and individuals who provide critical advocacy services and assistance to victims. And whereas Domestic Violence Awareness Month has marked a time to mourn those who have died because of domestic violence, to celebrate those who have survived, to connect those who work to end violence, and to educate lawmakers, community leaders, and police officers about the real dangers of domestic violence and the need to protect survivors. Now, therefore, we, the Grant County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2016 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month and urge Grant County citizens to work together to eliminate domestic violence from our community. In witness whereof, we have hereon to set our hands and seal the County of Grant to be affixed in Silver City, Grant County, New Mexico, this 15th day of September 2016. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Sierra, are you here to, for this? Is this? Do you have anything to say? Thank you for that. And I do invite all of you on October the 3rd, we have a, a prop, we celebrate Proclamation Day at the Women's Club at 9 o'clock. It's about an hour. And we'll have some um, uh, music from Angelica Padilla. Uh, and we honor some of the victims that have survived. Um, and we're going to have someone come and give a success story uh, that was also that is a survivor and she was in a very bad place. So she's very honored and that she will be able to say her story. Uh, on October the 12th, we invite you to our place, El Refugio, to our Peace Garden. We will have a Remember My Name ceremony. In our Peace Garden, we have, we've had a fundraiser where we sell bricks and families that have lost a loved one to domestic violence, whether it be a man, a woman, or a child, or law enforcement um, to buy a brick and they, we engrave their name, the date they were born, and the date that they died. So that is part of our patio. So we have six uh, victims that have died locally um, that will be, the families will be there and they will set their brick into our patio that becomes a permanent, it's permanent there forever. So, and then Helica Padilla will also provide, provide some music. We'll have prayer at the beginning and prayer at the end. Um, we invite you to that. Um, October 24th, 25th, and 26th, we have recruited Quentin McShann, uh, who will be coming to provide the DB, our annual DB uh, training for law enforcement, for advocates, social workers, counselors, nurses, first responders, we have to cut off at 40. Um, so I have sent out registrations to law enforcement um, and to different agencies. If any of you would like one, I can, I can send one to you for that. 
um, you're also invited to that because it's coming together as this coordinated community response to try our best to make a difference in this community and keep all of us safe. And especially our children that are growing up and our grandchildren. Um, so I thank you for that. Thank you very much. So I missed the time on the October 3rd meeting at the Women's Club. At 9 o'clock. A.M. A.M., yes, sir. And Rachel, yes, I want sir. to thank you. You've been the face of Elder Fisher for many, many years. It's a thankless job, difficult job. I know you've seen them come and go, and it's heartbreaking to, to, to live or to work where you work and see all the tragedy that you see every day. And I, I just want to thank you as a citizen and as a commissioner for all what you've done for this community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Thank you. So with that, I move to approve the proclamation declaring October 2016 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve. October 2016 is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, saying five, saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Can you take, you got time to take a picture with us? Sure. We're going to work Roger out today. Okay, Mr. Minus, item F. <laughs> Presentation from Mr. Minus regarding the use of side-by-sides and UTVs on public roads within Grant County. Have Thank I. you. Thank you. Uh, this is my second time I'm, I come over here to introduce this uh, for the approval of the ordinance for the use of UTVs. And uh, I've, I've gone to... Uh, a beautiful experience uh, with Santa Clara, Bear. I've gone to all their uh, uh, meetings, council meetings and all that, and uh, talked to the police department uh, and law enforcement, mayors and all this. And they're all very defensive, very uh, uh, cautious about this new ordinance. And uh, I said, uh, uh, when I first came in, I was thinking about myself. To tell you about this, you know, I saw myself, you know, riding around, and I'm going to do this ordinance, get it. And uh, I stopped, and I stopped and thought, you know, um, what about our community? What about our friends, our neighbors here in Santa Clara? Hello, Fierro, uh, Arenas Valley, and also our county. Uh, I give you back a copy of this, uh, of the Act, of the SNED Act for legislature. And uh, I, I researched and, and I thought, why is everybody so so defensive, so uh, cautious, so uh, uh, not very uh, agreeable? So I went through a phase and I asked, I asked the Lord to help me to understand why would the legislature pass this, this bill for uh, off-road and uh, through prayer and intervention uh, he gave me an answer. He said this, this, this legislature, this bill that I'm sending you is for, you to, for us to embrace it instead of being negative to be positive and embrace this legislature for our citizens and, uh, and for our county for our municipalities and villages that we have in order to, uh, to use this new technology called uh, ATVs well, UTVs and sites to uh, help us 
uh, economic thing uh, to to use the uh, the, the, the high fuel prices and uh, also to to be productive and also giving giving the the, the our police department our our community department with the county the use the use of this new technology that uh, uh, these machines uh, use less gas. Uh, my my tundra uh, uses 19 miles to the gallon, and with this ATV, ATV UTV that I bought, I get 40 miles to the gallon. So you can see a negative and positive, and the positive part of it is that we should embrace this blessing. To me, it is a blessing given to us to utilize these new machines, utilize the the, uh, the cost efficiency, the the the, the fuel, and and and, and uh, to help our livelihoods, our quality of life. And now uh, here with the county, I'm asking the county to consider an ordinance for for people not in the in the in the euro areas. Uh, outside the county that uh, can utilize these machines and also uh, uh, the county can use these machines uh, these beautiful uh, UTVs that uh, are cost effective and they're very safe uh, I, I gave you guys a copy of, of a picture of a UTV uh, do you have a there please? Yeah, yeah. I mean uh, <clears throat> They're, they're very, very, uh, uh, they're very uh, advanced, and they got very good uh, safety features. They're, uh, they, they have uh, disc brakes, they have seat belts, they have a roll cage, and they can also be converted and be used as a utility vehicle. And that's a variation of UTV, utility. We can uh, do wood cutting. We, uh, the sheriff's office can use it to. Uh, Patrol the, the, the county outside outside the, the, the city limits, and these machines are, are very. Uh, I think we should embrace this new technology that we have. Uh, instead of being backwards, this is a blessing. This is a lifeline being thrown to us, the citizens of Grand County and uh, citizens of New Mexico. That uh, and, and I did wonder. Why would the legislature approve something like this? That is kind of radical, you know. But uh, one of the things is a misunderstanding that we we are not aware of these beautiful machines that we can utilize, and uh, their uh, inner cost, uh, their cost is is half of what a vehicle has. The the fuel use is half, and uh, I'm calling the the county commissioners. Uh, and, Chairman, uh, to please consider consider using this new technology and embracing it for a better quality of life for everybody. Because me myself, I'm living it. I'm paying a lot of uh, uh, prices for fuel, and uh, I don't know why Grand County is being uh, left out like a demon. It's twenty cents. A gallon cheaper than what we're paying. Lord's Bird is also very cheap. And what the reason is that we're 50 miles away from the interstate. And why should we take take the blame and, and high cost when, when with these machines we can help our community and be productive and also our quality of life where we can uh, save money. Uh, as you know, uh, New Mexico is in a very tight budget. Uh, uh, revenue is very low. Unemployment is very high. And we need a lifeline to start getting people aware of these machines and utilize these machines as for a profit, not only for our household, for our survival and our way of living. And uh, to me, this is a lifeline, and I, I believe we should embrace it and use it as a positive way 
uh, not only for rec recreation, but also for uh, for the use, you know, of, of maybe uh, going to the stores. Right now, Santa Clara doesn't have any stores, gas stations, and enemies. Hurley also. Hurley doesn't have any gas stations, doesn't own any uh, uh, grocery stores or anything. So, and, and the number one thing in, in Grand County that's very important is transportation. And uh, we, we are reaching out to you in the county to get us here to our county roads to permit us to uh, approve this ordinance to help us get around the county and, and help our people, help our friends, our neighbors. Uh, we need a uh, little lifeline to help us with fuel. Uh, uh, I see a lot of, uh, uh, on the next, on the next uh, uh, page that I sent you was from the, from the, I got, I got also from an ordinance from approved by Farmington, New Mexico, where they're helping their people. They're helping their people by approving these machines that we can uh, improve our quality of life and help us save money. Uh, the economy right now, I mean, Walmart, you go to Walmart every week, it's 10, 15 cents more for a, for a watermelon, uh, uh, everything's very high. Uh, costs are going up, and we need some relief. And I'm asking the chairman, asking the county commissioners to consider us as uh, Grand County citizens to give us that lifeline to help us keep supporting ourselves and, and uh, uh, also uh, insurance premiums are going high. Uh, a lot of things are affecting Grand County, and uh, this this beautiful uh, legislation, I, I to me it's a lifeline to give it to all the communities and counties and and municipalities to help their people, not not see it in a negative way, but also uh, uh, Grand County Maintenance Department can use it as a as a beautiful vehicle, you know, to uh, patrol the streets. We can also start a, a neighborhood watch on these machines, you know, get together, make some clubs, help law enforcement, and get us involved in the community. And these machines will be very economical to do a lot of beautiful stuff. It's also help our, our, our neighbors, uh, members, uh, 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 I went to Royal Town. Uh, there's a lot of uh, subdivisions outside of the city of Silver City, where uh, there, there's county maintained roads. And uh, in inclement weather, like snow or rain, so they can have access. They can use these machines to use access also. Not, not only for leisure and, and sport, but they are useful machines. They're constructed. Uh, uh, they've got uh, very good technology. Uh, they've made them better and better, safer and safer. Uh, they've got seat belts. They've got uh, disc brakes. They've got, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, power steering. They got a bumper. They're very uh, well made now. And uh, everybody, uh, uh, like uh, third world countries. Uh, I was watching a movie, and you see China and India using those three wheelers, thousands of them in the streets. I guess they're, they're being smarter than us. Looks like they're smarter than us. And we Americans love big cars, and the, the, the UTV, uh, just because it looks different, does it look like a vehicle? Uh, we, we are adamant, we are defensive, you know. No, oh, they should be on the road and so that. And I'm, I've been that owner for three years. And I wish the commission would give the citizens of Grand County a little lifeline, a little relief for for us to save on fuel, fuel costs and give us a, 
can help us have a better quality of life and, and not let these uh, gas companies uh, rule, rule over us. We can find ways to to change to change the fuel prices by using different machines, and these machines are wonderful and very very uh, high tech. They're very high tech and very safe. And I've been using them for three years, and I wish you would consider that to help us citizens uh, in Grand County to for an ordinance to approve these machines to help better our life and make it better for us. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, Mr. Midas, you know, I'm not opposed to all-terrain vehicles. I own one, have owned one for many, many, many years. In fact, before the four, the four wheelers were around, I had a three wheeler. And so I use mine quite frequently. But I'm always very careful about the roads and stuff and which roads I'm on and, and how I use them. And also, one of my concerns, and it hasn't been, your request has not been on deaf ears. I've talked to the county manager, I've talked to the county attorney about some definitions, about how this, one of my concerns is, is first of all, part of under 6631011A, it talks about, uh, or, or A1, it talks about a limited, let me start over again. It says operation on streets and highway prohibited areas. In other words, you can't do it in these areas. A, a person shall not operate an off-highway motor vehicle on any limited access highway or freeway. Yes, sir. Now, we're looking for the definition of limited highway. That means, let me finish, please. There we're talking about, do we want those vehicles described in this particular statute? It's not an ordinance. It's a statute, state statute. On, on Highway 180, where vehicles are going 55 and 65 or 60 and causing a danger because one of our one of our jobs as commissioners is the welfare and safety of our community and the public and I'm and not only concerned about the people on the four wheelers and ATVs but those in cars and trucks and if you're talking about someone traveling from Santa Clara or someone from Hurley to a grocery store, my concern is limited excess highways. Is that Highway 180? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, sir. Um, if you see that, the one that you're reading about, uh -huh. you, you said A. A, if you read, A2. If you read A1. B and C. A1. If you read B and C. Mm -hmm. They can be used on highways, but not over 55. Not over 55. That's a, that's a lot for the state of New Mexico. Yeah. That it uh, ATV, UTV. Okay, my my side by side. I put DOT approved tires, signal lights, flashers, and everything. And the speed limit here is. Uh, uh, 50 from Santa Clara to Bear, and it's 55 from Santa Clara to Silver City. Those are the legal limits. And the ATV, UTV fall under that. So 180, 180 West yes, is 60. 55. Well, it's 60. To Cliff. To Cliff. Oh, to Cliff. Oh, okay. You, uh, we were talking about here. But so, you know, I. You know, my main point here is that I don't want you to think that I, I can't speak for chair, but these folks to my left, they know that I have addressed this, yes, and I am looking at it myself. Yes, uh, I guess I, I'm, I'm concerned about the safety and welfare of our citizens, yes. and so it's a, it's, a, it's a big decision about putting these vehicles. I mean, I go to Safford and the places in Arizona, and I see them use them all the time. I don't know exactly how they are using them. I see them at Walmart and stuff, but that's within the city of Safford, yes. and so uh, it's not on deaf ears. 
It's uh, being considered and, 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 and researched. Yes. But it's, it's a decision that we need to make and understand that we have a, a task here to make sure that what we're doing on our streets is, is going to be a safe decision. Yes, sir. Yes, I understand. And I also went to Alpine. I went to Cholo. I went to Canada. We understand all that. Yep. And you see our money, I mean, all of Tucson, we use them all over the streets. So it's been proven. They're safe. I've never seen one in Tucson, but uh, that's yeah. all right. And in Tucson, they got them in fields. They got them on the streets, on the, on the road streets and all that. I saw it. Anyway, uh, okay. it's up to you guys to enforce that ordinance if you want AT, uh, UTVs. I personally would not ride my side-by-side -side going to Cliff. I would stay within the 55 mile range. And that's what the state requires, 55 miles. I won't go to Demi. No. It's, if it's over 55, but you guys have the option to put that on the ordinance. It's not an ordinance. It's a state statute. Yes. And but what we would do is adopt that state statute. Also, uh, you can you can limit the amount. You can limit the amount. And that's why the legislature is giving you power. The legislature and the road commission is giving you the kind of power to regulate speed limits for the use of UTVs. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Abby, it, it does give us an option here uh, on D. It says, by ordinance or resolution, mm -hmm. a local authority may establish separate speed limits and operating restrictions for off-highway vehicles where they are authorized to operate on paved streets. Um, I, I was under the understanding that it that it uh, was only county roads. I do not I do not believe that anymore. I believe it's any paved road under 55 miles an hour or our recommendation of anything lower than that. Um, what is a limited access highway? That's a freeway. Well, it says freeway or freeway. I don't know why they put it in there twice. But limited access is where you have a where you have egress and ingress is like a, an on ramp or an off ramp, and you don't get on and off for many, many miles. That's my opinion. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah, I but I don't know why they're giving us the option of an ordinance or a resolution. Was to, just to my question. Why are they giving us the option between an ordinance and a resolution? Yeah, it's a, it's a oh, by ordinance or resolution, would we establish separate speed limits? I, I, I don't know what was in their their uh, thought process, but and then I even have a problem with the very. I don't think we can set speed limits for roads that are not ours, though. Does that make sense? Okay. We would, I think we'd be limited to our county Let's roads. See. Yeah, I don't know. So. When I read this, and, and Mr. Minus said it before, when it says operating operation on streets or highways, prohibited areas, a person shall not operate an off-highway off -highway motor vehicle on any, and I'm going to skip one because we've talked about the freeway, limited access highway, uh, and I'm going to move straight to two. They struck any. So they, that gives them the, the ability to have a four-wheeler or, or OHB or whatever on a paved street or highway, except provided in subsection B, C, or D, which C or D was added. But when you read that, I'm struggling to find where they're not legal right now. I do if not believe really we need to do anything. On not on the freeways or the limited access highways, um, but they are legal on a paved All highway. paved highways yeah. with right. under 55 miles mm -hmm. an hour, the way I read this. Unless you want to change that to a lower speed limit. Right, you can, you can That's the only option we have is to change the speed limit or safety. They're already legal. 
Yeah. Of course, they have to have the, the equipment, too. I'm not an attorney, but I did stay in the Holiday Inn Express last weekend, and that's the way I read it. Wow. <laughs> they have to meet all the requirements once in five These here? Yeah. You have to yeah. meet those. You've got to meet all those, but I don't think us. I don't think you have to have our approval for them to be able to ride on a on a paved road. And, and we can't amend the statute, the, the limitations of the statute by ordinance, so we can't make this any more liberal for Mr. Minus. Um, Right. What we can do is regulate the items that they've said we can. Which is only. Speed limits and operating restrictions and equipment. Mm -mm. And where they are authorized to operate. And equipment. Right. We could probably do something more strict, but I don't think that's what Mr. Minus is looking for. That's never a problem, yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure we're all clear on that. Make sure we're all on the same page. Okay, moving on to item G. Approve or disapprove agreement number A1636. Professional services agreement with Bohannon Houston for uh, completion of a comprehensive plan, asset management plan, and grant application support. We went over this on Tuesday. Make a motion that we approve A1636. So motion is second to approve A1636. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Motion passes. May I just say something on that? You know, this has been an issue that I've heard recently that since the elections have started about the county not planning about the future. If you get a chance, those candidates read this, you'll see that the county is doing a lot to look at the future and the infrastructure and what we have and what we don't have and from from, from you know from water to everything and so it's it's I, I i applaud staff for bringing this up and great job because uh this is a good document and a good step forward thank you uh, item H, approve or disapprove agreement number A1642, joint road maintenance agreement with the Pyramid Peak Mining LLC. This is for maintenance on Carlisle Road and Summit Peak Road. Motion to approve A1642. It's a motion. I'll second the motion to approve A1642. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, say five and say aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove agreement number A1643. This is an inmate housing agreement with Sierra County. Motion to approve A1643. So I'll second that motion. There's a motion and a second to approve A1643. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove agreement number A1644, inmate housing agreement with the Hildago County. Motion to approve agreement A1644. Second. Uh, there's a motion and a second to approve A1644. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Approve or disapprove resolution R1643, the Loss Prevention Committee Formation. So this is the bylaws, I assume, or somewhat thereof, of the committee. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve resolution R1643. There's a motion and a second to approve R1643, or I'll second it. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion passes. Approve or disapprove resolution number R1644, declaring the vacation and abandonment of the Ysidro, San Ysidro Street property and authorizing the sale thereof. The, uh, the committee is met, and we got a... Um, you got a report on that on Tuesday? Mm -hmm. Motion to approve R1644. The motion, I'll second it, to approve R1644. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Item M. Approve or disapprove resolution R1645, supporting the 2017 legislative priorities for the New Mexico Association of Counties. Motion to approve uh, R1645, and after you do your second, I'll just say something. Second. Well, 
you know, I'm on the board, and uh, I thought real hard that, you know, I'm one of those, you know, I was a police officer for 25 years and a judge for 16 years. And one of the things I found out that is the answer many times that we're finding throughout this country, and there's a lot of articles on it, the answer is not to hire more police officers, not to build more prisons, more county jails, or hire more judges. We've got to start addressing the diseases and the problems mentally mental problems, substance abuse problems that this country has. And I would like to see someday for our state to recognize that and because it's much cheaper. And you fix things. They don't come back next week after they get, you know, once they get out of jail or prison after two or three years. Is that you address the problem. Not to say that we're going to, you know, cure everyone. But that's the reason I, I'm really proud of this commission and the staff for supporting Tucasa because this county is addressing that. This county is saying that this is the way to do it. You need to have the other still. I agree. I mean, it would be ridiculous not to agree. There's some people who belong in jail, in prison, and have charges filed against them. But in the future, in fact, it was kind of interesting. I, I really had them talked into it for a while, but I, I see I lost out. But anyway, it's just something I'd like to bring up that this is important to uh, consider for the future. Thank you. So there's a motion and a second to approve R1645. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item N. Approve or disapprove resolution R1646. This is an adoption of the required community development block grant annual certificate, uh, certificates and commitments. Certifications and commitments. Motion to approve R1646. Second. Is the motion is second to approve R1646. Is there any discussion? I think I'm done with my soapbox today. No, I got I got more time for you. <laughs> I yield my time to you. No, thank you. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Motion passes. Approve or disapprove resolution number R R1647, declaring the vacation and abandonment of the alley lying adjacent to lot nine of B and H subdivision property, and authorizing the sale thereof. We went over that on Tuesday with the road abandonment committee. Motion to approve R1647. And I'll second R1647. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Approve or disapprove a resolution, R1649, accepting roads within the real member subdivision. Earl gave us a, a small a, piece. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, about a mile and a third. Yeah. Uh, Earl gave his blessing, said they were up to standards, so we would take them over for maintenance. Motion to approve R1649. Second, R1649. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Bids and requests for proposals. Item Q, approve or disapprove bid B1603, Pinos Altos LS Mesa Fire Station. Motion to approve bid B1603, uh, Pinos Altos LS Mesa Fire Station to Sacaton Construction, Silver City. Uh, base bid was uh, four hundred seventy-seven thousand three hundred sixty-nine dollars and ten cents, plus the thirty kilo plus the thirty kilowatt. kilowatts, uh, forty-three thousand. So I'll I will second that motion. So the the motion is to approve bid number B sixteen oh three with the base bid to Sacaton Construction and the thirty kilowatt uh, electrical system. Any discussion? Lucy, do you want to say something? Are you opposed? <laughs> Lucy's going to say nay. <laughs> uh, good morning. I'm Lucy Whitmarsh, and I'm the uh, fire chief for the Pino Altos Volunteer uh, Fire Rescue. And um, I would really, really like to thank all of you for your patience and your support through this long process that we've gone through. Um, to have a fire station constructed at um, 
uh, Dallas Mesa area, which is uh, this particular uh, station, will be on Bear Mountain Road. Um, and uh, again, I would really like to thank you for your support, and uh, we're really happy to be able to move forward with this project. Thanks, Lucy. Congratulations. Thank you. This is so divisive. Should we do a roll call vote? I don't know. You know, I brag about you guys all the time, and I go to those board meetings and stuff and, and mm -hmm. around the state, and I brag about our volunteer fire department. You guys do an outstanding job. These are citizen people, and they know, a lot of people don't realize uh, you're just out there on your own nickel mm -hmm. working at it. So thank you very much for your service. Well, thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, six, five, say aye. Aye. Motion passes. I've been in the No, you can't. <laughs> okay. Um, been a long time coming. Okay, approve or disapprove RFP 1601. This is a multi jurisdictional mitigation plan. Item R. Motion to approve. Uh, 1601 uh, multi jurisdictional mitigation plan to hazard. All right, uh, I'll second that motion. So there's a, a motion and a second to approve 1601. Is there any discussion on that? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Can I get a motion to recess the Grant County Board of County Commission? So moved. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion passes. I call to order the Grant County um, Indigent Hospital Health Care Claims Board. We have one item on the agenda today. That is to approve or disapprove the August 2016 health plan claims in the amount of $13,242. Motion to approve the August 2016 health care claims in a fund in the amount of $13,242.35. And I will second that motion for informational purposes. $12,694.35 went to Gila Regional Medical Center for the August, I assume that's 2016, uh, claims. There were 14 of them. And one claim for ambulance services for $548. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion passes. Can I get a motion to adjourn the Grant County Indigent Hospital and Health Plans Claim Board? Motion Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion passes. Call back to order the Grant County Board of Commissioners, and at this time we'll have elected officials report. And I was going to change it up just a little bit. I was going to start with Rob today because he's got the, the, all the fun stuff coming up. Um, thank you, Commissioner. Chairman. October 11th um, is the last day to register to vote for the upcoming general election. October 11th is also the first day that we start absentee voting slash early voting here in our office. Um, October 11th is also the day that we start sending out absentee ballots to those rural uh, communities that we uh, did by resolution back in November of last year. So individuals in Mule Creek, Cachita, Sapio Creek um, will receive their ballots within that week, hopefully, if everything goes well with the uh, mail service there. October 22nd, early voting starts at the Baird Community Center. That's a Saturday, and they'll be open from 9 to 6. Uh, their hours are going to be um, the following week, Tuesday through Saturday from 9 to 6. And, of course, we'll be open in our office beginning the 11th for early and absentee voting um, from 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. If anybody has any questions, they can call the office. They can also register to vote online. They can also, individuals can call our office to get an absentee application mailed to them, or they can download, download it online and mail it in to us to get that absentee application. We already have a whole stack of them ready to go, so I suspect a heavy turnout for this election. That's all I have, unless you guys have any questions for me. Good job, as always. Thanks. What you do? Okay, let's. Uh, well, Misty, how are you today? 
Mr. Chair, you to out. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I actually have it easy today. I'm just sitting in for all, but as of right now, we do not have anything to talk about in the assessor's office. He will have it at the next meeting. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sounds Thank good. You. All right. Let's go to Steve, and we have a report from Steve. Mr. Treasurer. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, um, it's been a slow month from uh, 17th of August to now. We've collected $13,046.24, so we've had a little bit of, uh, still a little bit of collections going on, but uh, hopefully uh, we're, we are mostly preparing for the new tax season. We're awaiting the uh, rolling over of the of the uh, tax rolls from the assessor's office uh, and uh, just wanted to kind of I, I was left with a question myself uh, after the presentation that Raul did yesterday and I wish he had been here so but anyway I, I took it on myself to look into what because of the of the uh, rates that were approved uh, yesterday basically the information that I feel the constituents need and would want is what changes were there, not just that there's a minimal change. Uh, if you live in the Silver City District, you are going to see a very small raise in your in your tax rate. So I was going to try to use uh, examples of people that we knew, but they would be too obvious. So. Uh, what I decided to do instead is pick uh, uh, just an arbitrary number. If you have a home that's worth $120,000 residential in one end, one end, you're without a change in the values because that's what was reported. The tax net tax bill is going to be about a dollar and sixty-eight cents more for 2016 versus 2015. For non-residential, it's going to be an increase of five dollars and twelve cents for the same value of property. However, in the Cobra District, there is actually a decrease in the rates, about forty-four cents per thousand. So, the same hundred and twenty thousand dollar home would see a decrease of seventeen dollars and sixty-eight cents. <laughs> in their taxes, 1768. And um, so, you know, that that is kind of, you know, I, I was taking my own information. I said, well, I'm going to pay $20 less. But so technically it is a very small change, but nevertheless a change. And, and I think that that's information that needs to be put out there. And, and I know we always have that issue when people come in with their tax bills and, set, and we're told, well, I thought there was not going to be a change and here I am getting a change. And, you know, and, and they need to understand that it's a combination of the value. So their, their notice of value that they get in April is very important to, to verify what it was last year versus this year and then the tax rate because we take the, the values that are approved by the assessor's office plus the tax rate that is approved by the county commission that is made presented to us by DFA they calculate it and they bring it send it down to us and we multiply it and that's what your taxes are going to be so you know there shouldn't be any surprises and, and that's I think that's the only fair thing to do is to let people know that there will be some increase and some decrease so they have any questions you know individually they can call our office or the assessor's office and we'll be happy to go through it with them well um, your phone number the, 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 the one in which is people living in town in Silver City they're going to see a four a 4.2 cent decrease per thousand Okay. The non-residential land is going to see a 12.8 cents decrease per thousand. 
Okay. Uh, those people living outside of town, they're still in the Silver District, will see an increase of 5.6 cents per thousand. In the non-resident, non-residential land, is going to have an increase of 8.7 cents per thousand. Okay. Okay. So what's your phone number there at the office? Your five, phone. Yeah. Five seven four zero zero five five and five seven four zero zero three zero for the assessor's office. Okay. <coughs> Go ahead. I don't mean to interrupt um, Steve, but yes, in the assessor's office too, um, we try to stress as much as we can to the property owners about that notice of value, how very important it is to look at it. So where they are going to be seeing that increase as well as if they did new construction. So. It's, it's not going to affect everybody. We did not increase the 3% this year. Next year, I know Raul is planning on it. Um, the tax rates did go up in some areas, as Steve said, inside city limits. I don't have the actual breakdown of it. I didn't know that I was going to be speaking about this. Um, but they're more than willing to give me a call, Raul a call, Jennifer, or anybody in the office can explain all of that to them as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Any questions for Steve? Nope. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Hall, I um, just wanted to go over a few stats and, and reports that I have. Uh, for the month of August, uh, my office um, handled uh, 538 calls for service, which is significantly high. Uh, compared to tw 2015, we had 467, which is an increase of 71 calls that we did for the month of August alone. Uh, we took 132 incident reports and we investigated investigated eight traffic crashes. Um, calls have been, uh, like they spoke earlier, um, we're handling a lot of calls in the municipalities and that is a concern. Um, unfortunately, they are struggling to hire people and um, it's based also on their pay. Um, they can't recruit so obviously, I as the sheriff will answer calls there, no matter uh, what. If if we're re requested, we will answer calls for the community. Um, I did take an oath to serve and protect this community, and so if they ask for the sheriff's office, we will respond. Um, and that that is happening quite a bit. Uh, we are being requested by different municipalities to handle uh, calls for them, not just the municipalities, the little ones, also some in Silver City. Um, I do currently have two deputies attending the police academy in Santa Fe. They're due to graduate in November. So far they're both uh, doing good. Uh, I've been getting good reports on them, so hopefully they'll be good uh, to go once they come back in November. Um, and I have two that are currently still on FMLA, actually coming back soon, hopefully. So the, the guys have been running pretty, pretty rapid. Um, handling a lot of these calls and, and dealing with the, a lot of the issues going on in our community. Um, I want to commend them for the work that they do. Uh, I do appreciate everything they do. Me being a law enforcement officer for 25 years, I know what they've, what they've seen, what they've done. I've been through everything, done everything, and I support them 100% with what they're asking you of you guys. Um, I stand behind them, and I hope that we can somehow do something for them. Uh, I hate to continue to lose good people to higher paying departments because of the pay. Uh, and I think we, we need to, to do something for them. Um, I have uh, met with the manager in regards to it. We're working on things um, and I appreciate that giving us an opportunity to try and work this, but we need to get something done soon before I do end up losing more people. I wanted to brief you a little bit in regards to the communication. Um, as you, I don't know if you guys are aware, but we have had major issues with our radio communication. Finally, we were able to figure out where the culprit or what the cause of our interference in our radio communication was. It's actually another sheriff's office in El Paso, Texas. The FCC was able to pinpoint it to another sheriff's office. Um, unfortunately, they're also public safety. Um, in doing research and background on it, they have had their frequency the same as ours for over 20 years. So um, it's not something that just happened. What happened with them is that they, they, they're they going to the 21st century, 
have upgraded their system on all their equipment and unfortunately just overpowered what we have. Um, El Paso has been gracious to kind of want to work with us on trying to resolve this issue. I do have a teleconference with them that was scheduled for tomorrow and see how we could work this out. It has been rescheduled to, ne to next Tuesday, but I think it's taking a little too long. So I have, with the blessing of the manager, we have contacted a communication place to get us a quote to see if we can just get another frequency and get this process moving. Uh, the safety of, of my staff is, is a priority. So, I mean, we've been working diligently on this since, since it's happened. It's been close to two years, maybe going on three, when we started having this interference and finally we were able to get the FCC involved. Unfortunately, it takes them a while to get involved uh, based on, on the concerns. Um, unfortunately, the, the FCC did send me a, a rule that's in place that that I'm going to read to you so you understand where I'm, where I'm coming from with this, is that all applicants and licenses shall cooperate in the selection and use of frequencies in order to reduce interference and make the most effective use of the authorized facilities. Licensees or of stations suffering or causing harmful interference are expected to cooperate and resolve this problem by mutually satisfactory arrangements. If the licensees are unable to do so, the Commission may impose restrictions including specifying the transmitter power, antenna height, or area of hours of operation of the stations concerned. So basically we're, we're dealing with this rule right now, but like I say, they're graciously working with us and we're going to continue to do what we have to do. I'm waiting on, on the quote from if we have to get a new frequency. We only have one right now that we're operating on. I, we're in agreement, we need more than one. And uh, the manager is willing and working with me on this, and hopefully we can get this resolved as soon as possible. As soon as I get the quote, I'll get with her and we'll see what we need to do to get this matter resolved. But um, it, is a, it is a big concern. I monitor the radio every single day and I hear the interference. So um, it's not something that we've sat on. We're gonna continue to work on it. And hopefully we get this, this resolved soon. Other than that, I have nothing else to report unless you have any questions. Any questions, Mr. Uh, sir? Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. Appreciate it. I'm glad we've identified that. We talked about it after the meeting uh, Tuesday, and uh, that's that's big, huge. Well, I'm glad to hear we can resolve it, though. Yeah. That's resolved. Yeah. Frequency. So, Madam Manager, you have anything today? I, I just want to make a comment. I, I wish the deputies were still here, but I understand they have jobs to do. Um, I would just like um, for this message to be relayed to them, if possible, that none of what they're saying has fallen on deaf ears. Um, I've heard everything they've had to say. I've taken every bit of it to heart. I understand um, the job that they do and respect it. Um, any one of them, are, I have an open door policy. Any one of them are welcome to come make an appointment with me. I will explain exactly what I'm looking at and what I am trying to do for them, but I do have an obligation to make sure that this county is financially sound. Um, the discussions that we've had, the work we have been doing is not being relayed to them, and I'd be happy to share that with any one of them. Um, one thing I would like to clarify, counties do receive money for citations. Um, we receive 20 bucks for every citation we do issue. Um, it was, it was stated that only municipalities get that money. That's incorrect. Counties do as well. Um, but I just, I just want to reiterate that we really are working. That, you know, I'm, I'm not ignoring. Um, I'm not um, insinuating that we cut staff. Um, I'm insinuating that maybe we restructure and look at the best possible way we can do this to provide the best public safety we can for our citizens. And I would just like to reiterate that message to them if possible. Commissioner? Sure. Yeah, okay, well, since the last commission meeting uh, on the 23rd of August, then I had a animal control, and we had discussed with the committee uh, the changes that, uh, or the comments by the citizens uh, from my prior meetings and such. The 24th, I had a COCC and CYFD meeting where we uh, made a presentation. Me, uh, three of us did. Uh, Susie Trujillo and Mike Carrillo uh, and myself made a presentation to them on Tucasa 
and where we're at. I also may have, uh, had a meeting with with Cog and its staff on the uh, uh, CDBG grant, and uh, Misha, he's not here, but I appreciate all the work that he's done, and also the staff on that, trying to. That's part of going to be part of our uh, our money that we're going to need for two Casa. Uh, then on 26, to talk a meeting with the committee provider, uh, HMS, and the architect. That was a fun meeting. Uh, that was a meeting where we could almost we could see and touch and smell things happening. Uh, the architect brought to our attention the type of uh, materials going to be used on the furniture, the colors, and and everything else. So it was a fun thing, and we got our plan pretty much together. We're going to have to change some doors, possibly maybe some windows, but it's all but done. Then on the uh, 30th, I had a meeting with Alex Brown uh, with the town of Silver City, reference to Eastmont, to Tukasa. Of course, we announced that our new address is going to be 3200 uh, 32nd Street, and as a result, then we need the easements and such into the property that we have, which is this uh, north of the state building uh, food distribution, I think. Income. What do they call it? Income support. Income support. And so uh, we had a meeting in, 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 in reference to that. Uh, then uh, on 9-8, we had a meeting uh, for Tucasa. Uh, uh, with staff, uh, the utilities and such. Not only do we have to get easements and stuff for the road, but also for the utilities. And we're working on that, and we finally got some responses that we were waiting for, and now we've got that in the hands of the, of the utilities company, and I haven't heard if they've made a decision yet, if they'll accept that or not. Um, that's basically it. Thanks. So I think what I would like to ask for from the manager and and, and the uh, and those people would be I'd like to have a real comparison of salary and benefits between Silver City PD and Grand County Sheriff's Office. You may already have that, I don't know, but you don't uh, you don't have to speak off the cuff if you don't want to. But I'd like to see something to where, because I know we do a lot of things with insurance. We do a lot of things uh, differently than them. I would, if I could have something side by side, I'd appreciate it. That's exactly what I'm working on, and it's going to take some time. And what I explained to the sheriff and Captain Flam is I had a couple other projects that were ahead of this. Um, I've had Renee Calloway, our HR specialist, gather some information for other similar sized counties. I have the information that was gathered from our salary and compensation study. Um, I also have a pay plan and some information from the town of Silver City. And that is my goal is to um, be able to have a side-by-side -side comparison for other similar type sheriff's agencies. And I also will compare it to the town of Silver City so that you have that to look at and see exactly um, where the disparity lies. Now, also, a majority of these deputies are represented by the union, and it's just going in and giving them raises is not how that works. They have to they need to be represented by their union, and that's how that needs to work. So really come to us and asking us for these special dispensations just for one department really flies in the face to all the other union members in our county. Okay. I want them to know that. Uh, they need to go through the, the proper procedures. Now, the ones that are not, that's something different. They need to be dealing with you directly and the sh with the sheriff. Okay? So that's all I had to say today. Anything else? You might have something extra? And I'll tell you, I'll move to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by say aye. Aye. Motion passes. <laughs>